Do you ever find yourself wondering, what's the purpose of my life? What's the point? Why am I here? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And is this all there is? Isn't there something more? Well, if you ever ask yourself these questions, you're certainly not alone. Hi, I'm Liam Naden, and welcome to my podcast, Let Yourself Off The Hook. As someone who has studied success for decades, I have found the formula for achieving your dreams and goals, and it's all to do with how you use your brain. Each week on my show, I will provide you with the tools, resources, and expertise to utilize your brain to its ultimate potential, and remove the barriers to your success. And as you will discover, true success in every area of your life only comes when you let yourself off the hook. Do you ever find yourself wondering, what's the purpose of my life? What's the point? Why am I here? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And is this all there is? Isn't there something more? Well, if you ever ask yourself these questions, you're certainly not alone. Most of us think these thoughts from time to time. And we especially find ourselves asking these questions, don't we, when we're when we're feeling frustrated, when we've got problems in our life, when we're feeling a bit overwhelmed. Those are the times when we say to ourselves, what's the point? What's the purpose of my life? Is my life really about struggling and doing all these things I don't want to do? I know there's something more. What is it? And of course, even by asking these questions, it makes us feel even more frustrated, more stuck, because we can't seem to find the answers. And we get into this vicious loop, this circle, don't we, of more frustration, feeling less that we know what the purpose of our life is, or feeling like the answers to what our life is all, all about seem to be further and further away from us. Well, you know, I used to feel like that, and in fact, I spent a long time trying to discover my life purpose. And especially when I was frustrated, dealing with problems, feeling overwhelmed in my life. And I tried all sorts of things to try and discover what my life purpose was. I read lots of books. I went to seminars. I listened to lots of the gurus speaking about life purpose and how to find it. And I meditated and I wrote down ideas and journals and diaries, trying to figure this out. What is my life purpose? But it really seemed like the, the harder I tried, the more I tried to find the answers, the more confused I got. And although I managed to gather a lot more information and have lots of techniques on how to find my life purpose, I never got any closer to the answer. But all of that changed when I became homeless and lost everything, because something quite different happened. A strange thing happened. And that was my life purpose actually got revealed to me. Now that might sound a bit odd, but in this episode, I want to talk about how this happened to me and how you can use these same ideas to help your life purpose reveal itself to you. And I've actually turned what happened to me into a four-step process that I discovered is really the key to uncovering our life purpose. Now, if you look at the lives of all great achievers, people who've done really amazing things in their life, people who've changed the world, what you notice is they all did have a very clear sense of what their life purpose was. In other words, they managed to find the answer to this question, what is my life purpose? And by knowing what they should be doing and why they should be doing it, it gave them a fuel or a momentum for their life that really drove and propelled them to achieve the greatness that they did. If you think about some of these people, for instance, Nelson Mandela. Now, he discovered his life purpose. He was the man who fought against racial discrimination in his own country, South Africa, to such an extent that he became the first black president of that country. And in his autobiography, he wrote that he knew what his life purpose was, that it really was to free his people and to create harmony in this, his country. 
and it was such a strong conviction, a strong knowing, a strong certainty that that was the purpose of his life, it kept him going through 27 years of being in prison. Another person was Steve Jobs, who created Apple Computers. Now, he knew his life purpose, and for him, it was to create revolutionary products that would change the world. And he certainly did that, didn't he? He's another example of somebody who, in discovering their life purpose, it didn't just change them, it changed the entire world. Now, when we hear stories like this of, of people who've achieved great things and who were clear on their life purpose, how does that make us feel? Well, on one level, it makes us feel inspired, doesn't it? But isn't it true that it also makes us feel a little bit frustrated and maybe a little bit even sad that we can't find the same certainty and conviction about our life? And we think things like, oh, it's just not fair. I could, I could do great things with my life. I want to do great things with my life. And I feel that on some level, I'm here to do great things with my life. But I just don't know what they are. I don't know where to direct my energy, my enthusiasm, and my attention. And sometimes we might conclude, well, maybe there is no purpose to life. Maybe it's a ridiculous idea to try and even find a purpose. Maybe life is just about, this is what it is. And sometimes we could think, well, maybe that's a valid argument or a valid answer to come up with. But the problem is, it doesn't satisfy us, does it? We still feel, even if we were to say, well, my life has no purpose, there's still a little voice inside of us or a little part of us that's saying, I feel there is a purpose. I feel there is something I should be doing. I feel there is a greatness within me. So saying that life has no purpose really isn't an answer. Well, the good news is there is a purpose, a great purpose to each of our lives. There's a reason why we're here, a very good reason. We are here to do something meaningful, satisfying and impactful. And all we really need to do is to go about doing it the right way. And I think the conclusion I've come to is the main reason we don't find our life purpose is we've been going about it the wrong way. We've been looking in the wrong place. And that's the real reason why we haven't found it. You know, it took me a long time to figure this out, and certainly a lot of wasted effort. But it's what I want to share with you in this episode. And really, it comes down to four steps. These are the four steps that allowed me to find my life purpose and I believe that they're the same four steps that virtually every purpose-driven person has also used, often perhaps without even knowing it. So here are the four steps to finding your life purpose. And as we go through this, just keep in the back of your mind this thought or this awareness, or maybe this, this resistance you have to these ideas that you're thinking, well, this sounds different. This sounds the opposite to what I've thought. But remember... If they're the opposite to what you've thought, maybe they're worth a try, because maybe your approach hasn't worked. So try mine. So here's step number one, and this is certainly going to sound counterintuitive, but that is to find your life purpose, the first step is to stop looking. Stop looking for your life purpose. And again, I know this sounds counterintuitive. After all, how can you find something if you're not looking for it? But the truth is, you don't find your life purpose, it finds you. You don't find your life purpose, it finds you. And I think we need to remember that the reason we are here is to live and find our life purpose. That means that you're here to do what you're meant to do with your life. You're meant to experience greatness. But think about this really carefully for a moment. If you think about a person who has achieved great things in their life and who has, a, has or has had a very clear sense of purpose, perhaps like Nelson Mandela or Steve Jobs, as we just talked about. If you look at their lives, isn't it true that their purpose came from the circumstances that they were in? In other words, where they were living, who they were, what they were doing, 
the time in history that they were living. And they didn't create those circumstances, at least not to start with. They didn't choose where to be born, which country, which time, which socio-economic group, which racial colour. They didn't choose any of those things. But it was the circumstances of their life where they were that were the foundation or the, the place where their purpose, where it grew from, where it was created from. And the important thing to realise about that is that your life purpose is contained within the circumstances of your own life. Where you are right now, the groundwork has already been done. The seeds have already been sown. So when you stop looking for it, it's going to sprout, to carry the analogy forward. It's going to show itself to you. So the first step really is to stop looking, to realize that the, that the basis for your life purpose is already within and around you. It just needs to be revealed, and you need to stop looking for it. So just say to yourself, make that commitment, at least for a while, at least while you try these four steps, and say to yourself, I'm going to stop looking for my life purpose. I'm going to stop looking for my life purpose. Now that immediately takes a whole lot of pressure off you, doesn't it? And that in itself is a key to finding your life purpose. Because if, you, if you've if you listened to previous episodes of Let Yourself Off the Hook podcast, you'll know that really it's pressure and stress that blocks the part of your brain that has all the answers. So by stopping looking for your life purpose, you take all that pressure off yourself and you allow your creative brain, the part of your brain that not only knows your life purpose, but will, will show it to you, you allow that to be activated. So that's step number one. St simply stop. Stop looking for your life purpose. Tell yourself you're not going to look for it anymore. And that leads on to step number two, which is sort of what I've suggested already, which is to allow your purpose to reveal itself. So once you stop looking, once you decide that you're going to stop looking, then the next step is just simply, as I've said, just allow it to show up. And it will. And it may come to you as a thought or an idea, an awareness, or even a feeling. But it's mainly going to be a feeling because with it is going to come a sense of knowing. Just knowing this is my life purpose. And here's the thing. You can't force this to come. In the natural world that we live in, Force always blocks. It always creates obstacles. Force isn't natural. So you have to allow your purpose to show up. And that also means you have to allow it to show up at the right time. You have to take away your expectation of when you think it should show up. You want to know right now. But you wanting to know right now, your impatience will only block it and slow down the process of it revealing itself to you. So you have to allow it to show up at the right time, which is maybe quite an unexpected time, probably will be. So stop looking and say to yourself, my purpose, my life purpose, will reveal itself to me at exactly the right time. When I'm ready, I'll know it. And it, it being infinite intelligence or God or this universal power or whatever you want to call this energy and this intelligence that flows through and directs everything, it will show me when it decides that I'm ready to know what it is. So that's step number two. After you've decided step number one, you're not going to look for it. You're not going to try it. You're going to stop trying to find your life purpose and you're going to accept that it's going to reveal itself to you at the right time, at the perfect time, when you're ready for it. Step number three is to change gears a little bit and do something which very few of us do enough of. And I've talked about this in previous episodes. And it's this. It's simply to stop and observe what's going on around you. Really take a moment to look and observe at what's going on around you. Because isn't it true that most of us, most of the time... We're so bound up in our thoughts and what's going on inside our head that we're not actually noticing what's going on around us right here and right now. 
And that's rather crazy when you think about it, because what it means is that we're missing out on experiencing the only thing that's real. The only thing that exists, certainly in this physical world, and that's what's here right now. And where else do you want to be, or where else do you need to be, when your life purpose reveals itself to you? You want to be right here, ready to receive it, don't you? Imagine you're in this situation where you're expecting someone to bring you a very important message. Now, you don't know what the message is, but you know it's vital to your life. And you also know that they're going to deliver it to you in your home at some point. As I say, you don't know when it will be, but you know they're going to show up in your home with a very, very important message, a vital message. Now, knowing that, how often would you go out and out of your home and, and go and do other things? Never. You're going to make sure you're always in your home, you're always there, and you're always waiting and looking out to see if there's that knock on the door with the person giving you that vital message. You're certainly not going to go out in case they arrive with the message and you're not there to receive it. So it's the same thing with living our life and waiting to receive expectantly what our life purpose actually is. We need to be there when it arrives. So as often as you can, and this is a really good habit to try and develop, and again I've talked about this in, in previous episodes, but get into the habit of becoming aware of what you're thinking. You know, when we get carried away and lost in our thoughts, become aware, and this is a habit and a skill we can develop, become aware that, hey, I'm getting lost in my thoughts, I'm not here, and bring yourself back to the present moment, and start to notice and observe just what's going on around you, in your natural world. That's going to pull you back into the present moment. That's going to pull you in the place where you're ready to receive not only the message of your life purpose, but every other message and important insight and awareness that is there to help you move on with your life in a positive way. One of the interesting things that happens when you bring yourself back to the present moment and you start to observe what's going on around you is that you become aware that things are very different in reality to what we think they are. We have these ideas and thoughts of, of what's going on, but once we start observing the natural world around us, we, we develop this completely different sense of what's really going on. Try it. So keep yourself at home as much as possible while you're waiting for the, the messenger to arrive with your life purpose. And step number four. Step number four is simply to take the next step that's in front of you without thinking. And when I say without thinking, I don't mean without thinking at all, but without overthinking, without thinking too much. It's just about taking that next step, because one of the ways, one of the most powerful ways that our life purpose reveals itself to us is through our actions. Because when you think about it, every time you take any action, and it doesn't matter how small the action, could be doing your teeth in the morning, could be opening your eyes, could be standing up, but every time you take an action, your life changes. That's really what life is, isn't it? It's just a series of small steps, one after the other, continually. From the moment you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes and perhaps have a yawn, everything in the day it's just a series of small steps that unfold before you. Most of the time, you don't even think about the steps that you're taking. This is what our life is made up of. Now, we know this for small steps, but the problem is when we think about our life purpose and we think about important things in our life, which may be more than doing our teeth or waking up in the morning, we forget that life is simply a series of small steps, small actions. And instead, we hold up our action with thought. It's our thoughts that slow us down. So we're trying to figure out what we should do. We're worried about making mistakes. We're trying to evaluate all of the information to decide the best course of action. And usually we're trying to think of something big. We're, instead of thinking of a small step, we're thinking of 10 steps at once, how we can do all of the right things to solve a problem or reach a goal in our life. So the key really is to apply the same natural process of taking small steps when it comes to 
understanding what to do and understanding what our life purpose is. So don't think of the next big thing that you need to do. Don't think of the next big decision you need to make. Don't think of the next 10 things you need to do, what the strategy is, what the plan is. Just think about the very next step, the very next small step. And in fact, the smaller, the better. I've talked about this a lot in previous episodes. And in fact, you might like to have a listen to episode number 12, which is all about procrastination and how to overcome it. And I go into a lot more detail about how these small steps, what they do to your brain, how they affect your life, and really how they're the key to achieving your big goals as well. There's a book called Man's Search for Meaning, written by Viktor Frankl. Really recommend it. It's a great book to read. But in that book, Viktor Frankl came to the conclusion that finding our life purpose is the primary driver of all human life. That's the one thing that all humans want to achieve more than anything, is to find their life purpose. He was a really interesting man, Viktor Frankl. He spent World War II in a concentration camp in Germany, and he was watching people all around him dying. But he survived, and the reason that he survived was because he had a sense of purpose. And it really was his sense of purpose that helped him survive, and he saw others fall around him when they lost their sense of purpose. And I think Viktor Frankl was right. I think having a true purpose, having something that inspires you, something that drives you to want to do and to do great things, whatever they might be, it's not just what we all want. And in fact, it's not even just what we all need, but it's what we're all naturally designed to know and to have. It's the fuel for greatness in our life. And the four steps I've shared with you I hope they do for you what they did for me, which is to realize that finding our life purpose is not only what we're here to do, it's not only our purpose is to find our life purpose and to live it, but how we find it is in a different way. It comes from a different place to what we thought. It doesn't come from trying to figure it out and trying to struggle and trying to resist what is in our life. It comes from our life circumstances, from where we are right now, and using those and using the power of our brain to guide us and lead us to uncovering and truly living our life purpose. Because here's the thing, when we're struggling and frustrated, we're locking into a part of our brain that doesn't know our life purpose and can never help us find it. And we're blocking the part of our brain where all of the answers and all of our greatness lies. So all we need to do is to shift the way we use our brain from the struggle shut down part to the inspirational creative part where all the answers are. It really is that simple. This is Liam Naden signing off. Thanks for watching. But before you go, there's some action to take. Hit the subscribe and like buttons and leave your thoughts in a comment below. I'd love your feedback. And if you have friends who you think would benefit from this, please share it with them. Thanks again for your support and stay tuned for more from me, Liam Naden. And remember, you can only reach your full potential when you let yourself off the hook. <laughs>